how to warp gradients in Photoshop, how to create all kinds of weird and wonderful transformations just by using warps. The start point being a gradient. Simply go over to the gradient tool and then select a gradient. Nice colorful gradient, one of the default gradients. And I'm using, I can use difference as blend mode, but I can also just use normal. I'm just gonna create a very quick gradient. But what I'm gonna next do is I'm gonna create a layer. So I'm just gonna to go to a layer and I'm gonna duplicate that layer. Click OK. Now I can resize that layer. I can do loads of transformations, but I can also warp the layer. So go to edit and then down to transform and warp. And you can warp it straight away. Just simply just drag, just go to the edge, go to the image, any point, just select at any point and just drag and distort. And you can distort and create all kinds of really weird gradients very quick and easy. And this is in Photoshop 221, but same in earlier versions as well. There's a few additional features that come recently. When you right click and you've got split warp crosswise or horizontal, and you can just add additional points and you can create a variety of different distortions if you want to do that. You just distort it and you can still continue to distort design and warp it all kinds of different ways. However, once you've done that, say you think, you know what, I want to reapply that same, same warp. Well, you can't. Just go there. There's, all you can do is undo warp. I'm not certain why Photoshop has never added a redo the warp. Makes no sense. But there is a workaround, and there's always workarounds, of course. And the key one, you can see there, actions. So simply go over to the actions panel and start recording or create a new action. Just go down to the bottom, there's a little plus there, and click that and record. Now go to edit and transform and warp. Okay, you have to create the warp again, but just can quickly apply some distortions there and you can distort it in all kinds of different ways. Sometimes if it doesn't let you warp, it will let you know by just beeping. And it quite often does that. It seems to be at that bottom bit for some weird reason. It seems to, yeah, there again, very strange. However, just warp it some way. Just create a weird and wonderful design and then you can press return. And you'll see straight away, you've got an action over there. Transform current layer. And if I, I'm going to stop it. I don't want to do any more. I'm just going to stop the recording. So that's it, stopped. And you can see it comes up with a load of information. It doesn't particularly show any great steps. It's got lots of things. Rational point, horizontal, 100. I have no idea. No idea what all that means. But anyway, it's stored away all the information. It's obviously got lots of detail there. But what you can do, you can apply it again. So you can simply resize this design, modify it in all kinds of different ways. And of course you can also apply an additional warp as well. You can always go back to edit and again, transform and warp, it's just you can't redo it. But you can now because you've got over here, this one, action two. Just go to the play and just apply it again. And it will just be warped again. And you can create all kinds of weird and wonderful shapes using this approach. And you can also, of course, go to another layer. So make sure you press turn there, and then go to background. I would suggest unlock that. And then again, what you can do, you can duplicate the design. Hold down the alter option key or go to a layer menu and duplicate. So you've got that duplicated. Now you can see I've got two layers. And of course you've got blend modes. So you can just go to blend modes. You can say, you know what, I don't want just normal. So I can go to the layers and I can just say, I want lighten or maybe difference. And as you move that around, you can see that changes and you can create all kinds of weird and wonderful combinations. And again, you can resize this design. You can rotate the design. And then again, what you can do, you can go over to edit and transform and warp make a completely different warp, but you've also got this action. Also, I've got another action that I created earlier, but it's exactly the same. Well, 
it's a warp, I should say. It's not exactly the same warp because it's virtually impossible to create exactly the same warp. I'm certain if you've got a perfect memory for exactly where you positioned everything, you could. I haven't. So you can apply it very quickly and create yet another distortion like that. And you can resize it. And of course, what you can also do with that, you can duplicate that. So hold down the alter option key again, or go to a layer and a duplicate with that layer selected and just duplicate that. And you can rotate the design. So you can see you can create literally infinite combinations of designs. And again, alter option key again to duplicate. And also what you can do, you can go over here to the layer and you can say, well, layer style. So I can go for drop shadow, add a quick drop shadow there. Maybe go for a bevel and boss, just a, a very subtle bevel. Maybe not even a very subtle one, just push the limits and then click OK. And again, exactly the same, you can duplicate that design. And you can create all number of combinations of this. But also what you can do, once you've done that, once you've created this design, you're happy with that design. You can flatten it, of course. You can always go layer menu, flatten image. And then you can always go to file and save. I would suggest save it to the cloud. I think the cloud feature is very good with file and save. I was really against the cloud for ages. I must admit, I was thinking, no, I am never going to save to cloud. I'm only going to save to my disk. However, a feature they've added recently that I think is super useful, especially with this, this way of doing it. And especially if you don't actually, as I've just done, flatten all the things. So if you keep them unflattened, just go to file and save, save it to the cloud. And you can also then use the version history. So you've got file and version history. It will do it eventually. There's version history. You can put version history on. And then once you've got version history on, you can go to window and you've got version history. Literally, you can bring back all combinations of your gradients and the way you've done it, combined it. So you can literally have a library, a mass library of these transformations and gradients to create an infinite amount of designs using this feature, this approach with just any kind of gradient. And of course, you can still continue to add new gradients to it as well. So you've got this design. I'm going to go to flatten again. Well, you can also apply effects, of course. You don't have to just keep it like this. You can always go and say, you know what? I don't want it to be like that. I can blur it. So I can blur it slightly. But I can also then, again, go to here and I can unlock it. I always wish that it wouldn't just always lock it. It would be nice. Flatten image. It would be nice if you could set it so it doesn't flatten it completely, but just has it a layer. Someone's going to put a comment saying you can do that. However, once you've done that, of course, again, layer and duplicate layer. And then, you, of course, you've got this action again. You've got the action here, or you've got the action I created earlier as well. Exactly the same sort of thing, transformation, etc. And you can run it. And again, you can distort your design. You can see the design you get. And of course, you can always then go and run it again. And you can create another distortion. So literally an infinite selection. And of course, Weird shape there, but you can resize that design. And then once you've done that, you can hold down the alter option key and duplicate that design and create all kinds of weird and wonderful layer combination. And again, rotate design if you decide. Now you can also, if you wish, go to layer and smart object, convert to a smart object, perfectly reasonable as well. And then modify things. Probably in some ways better actually. But you've got your design there and you can continue to do that. Of course, once you're happy with that, again, and this is the reason why I suggest window and version history, you can just go back again. You can just keep going back, forward, and select all these at any point in the future. So it's a literally an infinite resource. Well, next thing to do, I'm just going to flatten this image. Because I'm going to go over use selection. Now, I'm just going to use a selection. I'm just going to use elliptical marquee tool. Nothing particularly amazing there, but say select that, and that's just selecting the background layer. And I can control C and control V or whatever, copy and paste, basically. So I've got that design there. It's just a layer, just a standard layer now. And I can add some additional effects to it. So I can go to layer, style, drop shadow. So I'll just say quick drop shadow. 
So you can see, a bit clearer there. Well, what you can also do, you can go to Edit and Transform and Warp. So you can warp that design. You can stretch it out and warp it in all kinds of different ways. Obviously, sometimes it just tucks under itself. And I think that actually that's quite an interesting effect as well. Sometimes we can distort it and sort of drag it down, really pull it off in a different direction. You can create all kinds of weird and wonderful shapes. Again, if you want to, before you do that, you can always go over to the actions and record it. It's unfortunate you can't retrospectively <laughs> record it, the action. It'd be nice if you could do that. But it would be because uh, sometimes you've done something, you think, you know what, I wish I'd recorded that. But you can't do that unless you can. No, anyway, you've got that design there, but of course you can still go over to the action and you can apply that. And I love doing that because I don't know what's gonna happen. I mean, sometimes the design, the shape looks terrible. And I think, what a disaster. But sometimes I think, you know what? That was pretty good. And again, I can always go to layer and smart object, convert to a smart object, add effects to it and then apply the action to exact same so you can just distort it maybe multiple times however you can't do that because what you need to do is you need select the right one you need to convert it to a smart object again i know you can't add another transformation on another transformation but you can if you make it into a smart object so layer and smart object convert to a smart object now you go over to the action and you can distort it and so on and so on and again if you try and distort it again let's just apply it again it won't do it because it needs to be converted to a smart object again i know it ends up with a situation where you've got a smart object a smart object of a smart object but it's still it's a workaround but it does mean you can still go and warp the design even more and more extreme shapes which of course once you've done that and sometimes, of course, transformation doesn't let you particularly easily transform it. Now, you can then hold down the Alter Option key again. And you can create multiple copies of that design, which you can then drag across the image. Maybe use it as a pattern source as well. You can always define it as a pattern, do many other things. You combine multiple shapes, select a load of shapes. So select four or five shapes together. Go to Layer, and then go down to Smart object, convert to smart object, all one smart object. Again, go to the action and apply design. And you can see then what happens. You warp the shape in all kinds of different designs. And again, hold down the alter option key and duplicate and just drag around. And you can create truly weird and wonderful shapes. And this is all from one single gradient all the way back to the start, one gradient, and you've got this, this design like this, just by combining, doing a few transforms, a few, few warps, all a set of actions, which of course you can build up maybe 30 or 40, 50 actions, warps, different warps, that work in different ways. And they can all be used with that sort of shape, with type, with other different vector designs, whatever. We're filled with gradients or not. And again, you can still continue, maybe go and apply a filter or two. Just to say a distort, a warp, wave, stylize, my favorite one, oil paint, and simply apply oil paint a couple of times and apply maybe image adjustments, levels, etc. Well, hope you found this tutorial of interest. Always adding new tutorials all the time. A dislike or like, always appreciated. Thank you much.